Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to part 8 of Sonic Boom Fire and Ice. We are still going through Cutthroat Cove, the pirate world of the game, and, uh, you know, I gotta give credit to Sanzaru Games. It's not easy coming up with new original zone ideas for a Sonic the Hedgehog title, you know? But with this entry, they wanted to do something different, so it was like, hey, how often is Sonic in a tar pit? Hey, how often is Sonic in a pirate world? The next world coming up, hey, how often is Sonic in a gothic castle type setting that looks like it belongs in Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> You'll see what I'm talking about when we get to that, but uh, Sonic's been around since 1991, and with every single game there have been like multiple zones per game, so you always spice it up with a whole bunch of different locations, and Sonic's been everywhere. He's been in a volcano, he's been in a winter wonderland, he's been in cyberspace. Multiple times, in fact, because Sonic Advance 2, he was in cyberspace. Sonic Advance 3, he was in cyberspace. Shadow the Hedgehog had, like, digital circuit and stuff like that. So there have been a lot of cyberspace levels in Sonic. He's been in outer space. He's been underwater with a whole bunch of aquatic bases and whatnot. Uh, you know, you think of a theme and he's probably done it. A candy world? A food world? Yeah. That existed in Sonic Colors with Sweet Mountain. And then in Sonic Lost World, Dessert Ruins is a thing. So there's a whole bunch of candy and food in that place. <laughs> uh, what about uh, a canyon? Uh, we've done canyons. What about uh, a cowboy type setting with like... With like, minecarts and whatnot. Uh, Sonic Rivals 2, it's happened. <laughs> like when you actually have to go through the list of every single Sonic game that's ever existed and try to find an original never before done theme. Oh, what about a city? Uh, Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Speed Highway, City Escape, Radical Highway, those levels all took place in a city. Sonic's been in a city, so you know. Mario was late to the curve on that one, well technically not true. He's The original game was Donkey Kong, so he's been in skyscrapers ever since he was a thing. And then there was Donkey Kong 94, and there's a lot of buildings in that game, but uh... I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just saying that, like, there's a lot of worlds in Sonic games. And trying to come up with original ones, like, 20 years after the fact that Sonic's been around for a long time and the game comes out every single year and it never fucking stops. And then this goddamn retrospective just goes on for way longer than you thought it would and it's almost been fucking 10 years? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> they had an episode there. I don't know why. <laughs> And I've been doing Sonic since 2010, so it's been eight years, almost nine. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'll definitely catch up by the time we hit the 10-year anniversary, I hope. I'll be done the Sonic retrospective by 2020, right? Right? February of 2020? Oh god, I better make it. I better make it. <laughs> oh, I better make that deadline. I'm telling you right now, I better make that deadline. Oh my god. But you know. It's just worth mentioning. Uh, some could, like, complain that, like, oh, but there has been pirate stuff before, Clements. What about uh, Pirate Island from Sonic Rush Adventure? The entire game was about you taking on a pirate. Captain Whiskers, David Jones! And, of course, his assistant, Johnny, who is a chump. <laughs> Johnny's a chump. You heard it right here. But, uh... <laughs> And, 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 like, the world coming up, you could say, oh, a gothic castle type setting? Oh, what about Sylvania Castle from Sonic 4 Episode 2? Everyone remembers that game. Everyone liked that game. <laughs> Sonic 4 was a good series. I don't care. <laughs> People always give those games shit. They were, they were more true to classic Sonic than a lot of, like, throwback games have been. I don't know. Aside from, like, the momentum and the physics, but whatever. <laughs> All right, now I'm digging a hole for myself. I don't need to dig a hole for myself. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know what the tar pit's ever been in Sonic before, though. Like, that one I'm actually legit having trouble trying to think of if that's been in Sonic before. And I like to think it hasn't. I'd like to think it hasn't with all the bones and the tar all over the place. I think that's pretty original, pretty different for a Sonic title. Right? Right? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, that's it for the first half of Cutthroat Cove. I can't wait to get to the next stage because it has one of my favorite music tracks in the game. My red 
Titanium Enhanced Racer will make you look like a sick snail, Sonic! But alas, Dr. Eggman has ambushed us, and now we have to race once again. And this is where the difficulty of the races starts to go up a little bit, because now the robots that's go that are going to be chasing you from here on out are way faster. Or at least they have such good rubber banding AI that they're always very, very close to where you are. So if you make too many mistakes, they can easily overlap you and get ahead of you. Uh, and that's not to say that the situation is hopeless by that point. If they get ahead of you... The robots do do a lot of dumb mistakes. They do bounce on springs way longer than they need to. Sometimes they mistime their jumps and screw them up a whole bunch of times. So it's not like it's impossible if they get ahead of you. Don't worry. Uh, but the robots will keep up with you. And now we can actually see the robot on screen, which uh, he's right next to me. <laughs> which was not the case with all the previous races in this game. So look, he got past me. Oh, God. Because that was the one thing. I was holding left because I was moving left and then the booster made me go down and I thought I was going to keep going left so I was holding left on the control stick and uh, I accidentally slowed myself down and I was like, ugh, don't want to do that. Again, the air dash is so helpful. Every time you hit a spring, every time you want to get somewhere, move ahead really, really quickly, air dash is absolutely your friend for these segments. You want to air dash as often as possible. Trust me. And, uh... And it's pretty intense. Pretty intense. These robots are a lot faster. I've never actually lost to any of these robots yet. Uh, every time I've ever done these races, I've always won. So, <laughs> not to humble brag or anything. I am the great Clement. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> I've never actually lost to these races, either in test playthroughs, my initial playthrough, or the Let's Play that you're watching right now, so, uh... I'd assume you'd have to redo the entire race all over again, uh, if you got beaten, but uh, it's never happened to me, so I don't know. Still, you know, it adds an intensity. For little children, this is going to be a little stressful and a little, like, ugh, it's going to make them panic quite a bit just to see that the robot's constantly on their tail. And it really does feel like rubber banding, because sometimes you move so fast you wonder, like, could the robot really catch up to me with all the maneuvers I'm doing, with all the air dashing and homing attacks and stuff that I'm doing? Come on, how are they catching up to me so quickly? I don't know. Oh, and someone in the comments pointed out, yeah, Sonic never really passes the finish line, does he? He, he kind of reaches where it starts, and then he doesn't go past it when he does his victory animation. So it's like, Sonic, just move ahead. Go go past the checkers. Go past the checkers and confirm that you, you won the race. Come on, man. <laughs> what are you doing? You're freaking me out, man. Come on, you're freaking me out. But now we got ourselves another tunnel level. Yay. <laughs> Again, Sonic Boom Fire and Ice is a good game, and when you're playing the tunnel levels and the hovercrafts in person, at home, when you're not doing commentary or a let's play, it's not that bad. It's kind of intense and exciting. I like the fact that it only takes one hit for Sonic to die in these sections. You just touch the generators once, it's not like you bounce and like lose rings, and then you stumble, and then you can just keep going. No, no, you hit the generator, dead, done, you have to restart the whole thing all over again. And there's no checkpoints in here either, so sometimes these tunnels go on for like a minute 30, two minutes, and when you're at the like the two minute mark, and then you hit a generator at the very, very end, you have to redo all of that all over again, and uh... You know, when you're trying to go for 100% completion and you're trying to beat the time limit, it's pretty intense to constantly hold the boost button down. And, you know, your heart starts racing because you don't want to run into anything. But it's so easy to run into anything, especially since you can't transition left or right without letting go of boost. If you don't let go of boost, you can't move right or left. So you constantly have to let go, push on, let go, push on. And it's intense. It is intense. It's just when you're watching a commentary and doing a let's play for it, and this is the second game that Sanzaru Games has released where they also had tunnel levels in the first game. <laughs> it's just repetitive to watch this again and again and again, and I'm just like, I, I, there's nothing to say. When you're in the fire cave, turn to ice. When you're in the ice cave, turn to fire. I've said that a million times already. <laughs> You know, some people should be amazed that I've been doing the Sonic Retrospective since 2010, and I still have things to talk about. I am still- I still have enthusiasm 
for this entire freaking thing, okay? I still have enthusiasm for Sonic, and I'm still into this. Some people have been kind of disillusioned with Sonic lately because of Sonic Boom, because of Sonic Forces, and there's a lot of people who are kind of burned out and they don't really care about it all that much. There's even people who don't like Sonic Mania just because it's a lot of older zones and it doesn't feel super new to them. And, uh... I just want to reassure people, I'm still a huge Sonic guy, you know? I watched the Sonic Boom TV show, I'm still getting all the games. I'm gonna get Team Sonic Racing, absolutely, I'm looking forward to it. Sumo Digital hasn't, uh, steered me wrong before, and they're delaying the game into 2019, so I get the feeling it's gonna be a lot more fun than some people have initially seen with the previous demos and stuff, so I'm looking forward to Team Sonic Racing. I get the feeling that's gonna be a lot of fun. I already like the team mechanic gimmick that's going on with that game, and uh, you can bet I'm excited to see what Sonic Spirits are in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate coming out this Friday. Ooh, Smash Brothers is almost here, ladies and gentlemen, I can't wait. Oh my god. <laughs> I do not have disillusionment with the Sonic franchise. Uh, I am still very much a Sonic fan, I'm still very much into the series. I'm still going to be playing these games quite well into the future. And yeah, there's been a lot of dull games like the Sonic Boom stuff. I don't like Sonic Forces, but so what? I haven't decided that I hate Sonic nowadays. Some people, they get older, and that's just what happens, you know? You get older, and then you kind of outgrow the things that you liked before, but now that the series is kind of stagnating, and now it's not seeming as cool to you anymore, and some people are looking back on Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 like they were never good and they are always terrible. What was I thinking when I grew up in the 90s? Sonic Adventure is awful! <laughs> That's not me saying that. That's an opinion I'm making fun of. But, uh... You know, some people just get older and they grow out of Sonic. I don't blame you, you know. It's easy to lose enthusiasm for something that's pre predominantly made for children. Sonic is never going to have hardcore curse words like Shadow the Hedgehog did ever again. At least I assume it won't. Who knows? There could be like, uh, you know those comics where they take like the Warner Brothers characters like uh, Elmer Fudd and uh, <laughs> Snagglepuss and like they put them into like weird like edgy comic book versions where they're like kind of hardcore and ridiculous. <laughs> Like, there's a, there's a crossover between Elmer Fudd and fucking Batman. I don't know why, but there is, and that's amazing to me. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe Sonic will be edgy one day, but uh, I just want people to know, I'm still a fan of the series, I still have enthusiasm for it, still here for the ride, and, uh, yeah, I still love Sonic. And I still love Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, and I still love all the cheesy butt rock of that game, and I still love all the great, awesome fan art that I see of Sonic every now and then. And uh, I'm not talking about the porn that's on Tumblr. Although I will miss the porn that's on Tumblr. Rest in peace, Tumblr. Uh, <laughs> Where am I going to get gifts of people having sex now? I... whatever. <laughs> but, uh... Still love Sonic. Still love Sonic. So don't you worry, guys. I am still enthusiastic about this franchise. I'm still here for you. I'm still here for you. Here for you. I'm getting an accent. Yeah. <laughs> There's treasure in the background of this of this cave, and I'm just like, Sonic, get the treasure. Come on. Why are you running through this empty pirate world that has no pirates? It only has robots, and there's like treasure lying around. Maybe it's like Pirates of the Caribbean, and it's like cursed. And if Sonic grabs like one of the coins, he turns into a skeleton at night. <laughs> Speaking of Pirates of the Caribbean, that theme song you just listened to, oh my god, this is one of my favorite tracks in the whole freaking game. And yeah, it is certainly Pirates of the Caribbean-esque. It certainly sounds like Hans Zimmer's score from that movie. But uh, my god, it's one of the most heart-pumping pieces of music in this game, and I listen to it over and over and over and over again after Fire and Ice came out. This is actually my favorite track in the whole entire game. And uh, I'm going to be playing the track for you at the end of this video. But man, I love the Pirates of the Caribbean music in this stage. It is so fantastic. And uh, Richard Jock, man, he's still got it. You know, if he's back for Team Sonic Racing come 2019, I'm going to be super happy for that. But uh, 
I'm already loving what I'm seeing from June Sonoy and Hyper Potions. Oh, I'm so glad Hyper Potions are making regular music for Sonic. They did such a good job with Sonic Mania. Oh my god. But, uh, Richard Jock knocks it out of the park with this Pirates of the Caribbean-esque theme song for Cutthroat Cove. And, uh... Anyway, I'm going to leave this video with the theme song, and I'll see you in part 9, where we might get some answers as to what Defect's deal is. See you then.